So as you can see, a lot of you know the legwork, a lot of the hard work that um, business owners or agents you know have is removed from your plate in order for you as a franchisee to focus on uh, your business development and growing the brand and so on. Hello, welcome to episode 175 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Krim Korechny, Massachusetts State Director of Franchise Development for Property Guys. With more than 25 years of disrupting real estate norms throughout Canada, Property Guys is in the first few years of expanding into the United States. Not only do they offer sellers an alternative to selling their homes, they also offer real estate agents and entrepreneurs an opportunity to build their own businesses as a franchise owner while having the backing of the systems and data gained over their 25 year history. Throughout our conversation, Krim shares what Property Guys has to offer its franchisees, how individual franchises can grow their businesses, and how sellers can benefit from using their services. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the all new Smart Agents Magazine has launched and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to today's featured interview with Karim Krechny. If you're interested in learning more about Property Guys, I've included several links in the episode description. Really, the way I like to start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are and where you're at. Sure. Um, so I'm going to start with where I am because it's, uh, it's a little odd. I'm actually currently <laughs> right. in Malaysia. Right. Um, I'm in, uh, on an island uh, named uh, Penang off the coast of, of Malaysia. I've been here for about eight months. I've actually been traveling worldwide for about uh, a year and a half, uh, which, which is something that I've aimed to do for, for quite some time. Um, and who I am, I'm Karim Tereshni. <laughs> I'm a, an entrepreneur and uh, uh, my, main, my main focus for the past uh, year and a half now uh, has been with, uh, with PropertyGuys.com. I'm uh, in, in charge of franchise development in, uh, uh, in New England, but mostly focused on Massachusetts. That's where you know, I want things to, uh, to take off. Um, so franchise development, meaning I'm you know, in charge of attracting and selecting the best franchisee for each uh, territory, each franchise that we have available in uh, in Massachusetts, and um, uh, in in a nutshell, what Property Guys is. I know we're gonna go deeper into it, but in a nutshell, what Property Guys is, it's a it's kind of a disruptor in the real estate industry. It's basically a player that comes to uh, to do things a little bit differently. It's very unique, um, and it basically allows uh, buyers and sellers, sellers in particular, to um, to to sell for. Uh, a fraction of what they, they it would cost typically to sell a property, um, to have all the services that they need in a in a package that is a one time flat fee, um, and to keep the level of control they want in the process. As you know, there are lots of people who want to sell on their own for whatever reason. That's a great you know model for them. That's how it uh, it started. And then within this model, as I mentioned, I'm looking for franchisee that will um, own uh, an exclusive territory uh, right now in Massachusetts. Right. That's what I do. Right. And so this company, it got its start in Canada and has, uh, has been, um, kind of expanding since then. Tell me about, uh, the, you know, the amount of franchises that are, you know, in Canada and that are starting to spread into the new England area. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we have close to a hundred franchise in Canada. I don't have the exact number because it, you know, it fluctuates. Um, but we have franchisee from coast to coast. So basically, in all type of all types of markets, from you know Vancouver to uh, to uh, to Halifax, for those who are familiar with with Canada, um, and uh, and so the franchise <clears throat> uh, have different shapes and sizes because they are all built based on the uh, the potential, the number of dwellings. Typically, they have about forty thousand residential dwellings and a similar number of uh, of commercial. Um, and um, and over the years, obviously, we've had hundreds of franchisees, some that built. A lot of them that built, you know, a million dollar a year plus uh, business. So um, once we've decided about six, seven years ago that we want to, sorry, 
uh, two, three years ago <laughs> that we want to expand internationally. Uh, funny enough, before the U.S., they actually expanded in South Africa. Uh, now there is about 14, 15 franchises over there. Um, and, and then we opened in, uh, in Florida, Texas, and then myself in, in Massachusetts. Um, so the number of franchises in Florida, Texas, I think there is four or five. Um, it's not, it's not, um, uh, the, the main focus for the, uh, the, the, the master franchisor, uh, down there. Uh, but in, in Massachusetts, we have four that will be starting, um, in, uh, in the new year. Um, so we have, uh, Weymouth, Norwood, uh, and a couple around, um, around Boston. Um, so uh, pretty exciting stuff because I've been working on that for a year and a half and now it's it's opening up and we have the first few franchisee uh, starting. So pretty exciting. Right. So I definitely want to touch on, um, you know, the type of people that you're looking for to, you know, become franchisees. But before we do that, I uh, want to dive in a little bit more about what uh, property guys, you know, are, you know, what uh, the offer is for, you know, the people that are looking to sell their homes. What, uh, you know, what do you offer? Absolutely. So to, to make it simple, say you're uh, a seller, um, you want to sell your home or a commercial property, by, by the way, it doesn't actually even matter the size of the property, the value of the property, if it's commercial, residential, a piece of land, or whatever it might be. Um, in, instead of, you know, um, the traditional model, you may list with property guys. Um, so first off, you get the website that is, you know, similar to um, uh, to, to Zillow or Redfin in, in that sense, you know, you can list on, on that, on that website, but that's one small part of the value. What you, what you, what you choose is basically a package of services as much or as little service as you need. Um, so for someone who wants to be more hands-on, like a for sale by owner, you choose a package that contains just a, a handful of services or what usually clients choose is the full service package where they fully hands off. They get um, as an example, uh, a stager, photographer, uh, drone shots, listing, you know, listing on, on the MLS, on Zillow, on all platforms, all the marketing and exposure. Um, you may also get, uh, uh, so, you know, someone uh, helping with uh, writing the offer, even, you know, appraisal service. Um, what else, you know, professional showings and even the lawyer, everything is included, basically. That's what I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to say. And all of that for a one-time flat fee. That is typically, depending on the market, four, five, six grand. Uh, for for all of that, so it's you know you can see how revolutionary it, it is from the the client standpoint, um, and um, for the franchisee, um, it, it basically it's a different way of looking at the industry. A lot of franchisees are real estate agents, um, and when they become franchisee, obviously they don't make you know as much per uh, uh, per listing or per client, uh, but they work on a much larger volume. So for someone who you know, loves real estate and, and, and bringing value to their clients, that's a huge opportunity because they work with on average about 100 listings a year. Um, and they can, you know, then work with similar number of buyers um, and without having to actually push uh, much more, you know, without having to prospect a lot more. You know, a lot of, I talked to a lot of agents and, and one thing that they, uh, they found out when they get into the industry is that they didn't realize how much, you know, prospecting there is and how much, you know, sales and cold calling and door knocking and, and so on. Uh, they you know, they might be a little bit taking it back. So that's the difference when you actually own a franchise of a, you know, a, a well-established brand that has, you know, multiple channels of, uh, of leads and, and clients. Uh, you don't need to do nearly as much prospecting. What you do is more growing the brand and educating people on this alternative solution. And just by the brand growing, you know, nationally and in your state, in your community, um, a very substantial uh, portion of, uh, of your leads and clients just come organically. Uh, people who heard of it, it's like being the, the only, you know, Remax or Keller Williams agent in one territory. They all, they all yours. You don't have to compete with anyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Know? And so, you know, talking about those franchisees, um, and you said a lot of them are uh, agents themselves. Do you have to be licensed to become a uh, franchisee? That's a great question. So you don't actually. And that's one of the value that we, we, we bring up for any kind of aspiring entrepreneurs. It doesn't actually have to be a, an agent. We have veterans and nurses and teachers that, you know, want a, a career change. Um, and so they don't need to, to be licensed because a lot of the services, if not all the services, including in those packages are delegated to uh, partners, local exclusive partners that we have. So it might be uh, a mortgage brokerage, a, a real estate, real estate brokerage, you know, locally, uh, you know, photographer, stager and so on, lawyer. Um, and, uh, and so each of those listing, you know, go from one professional to the other. They all, they all, 
you know, pitch in to, to help each of those clients. So at the end of the day, the franchisee himself is kind of the quarterback, but he doesn't actually have to be involved hands-on mm-hmm. with each one of those listings. Um, mm-hmm. He may, uh, as a side note, we have some franchisees who like to be hands-on, so they want to do their own photography. They want, you know, help with this and that. Uh, and that's great. But we also have lots of franchisees who are more business-minded and want to, you know, grow, you know, business development, you know, want to, 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 to grow their, their franchise. Um, and um, as I said, in which case, they don't have to be licensed. However, um, about six years ago, actually six, seven years ago, we opened a side brokerage called Property Guys Direct Realty, PGDR. Um, and that gave the opportunity to franchisee to either get their license or to come hang their license uh, within this brokerage. And all of a sudden, uh, not only they were able to offer those license services themselves, so they keep a larger piece of the pie, uh, profit margin on, uh, on each uh, listing. But on top of that, say out of 100 sellers, you might have 30 or 40 or 50, you know, uh, of those clients who want to, to buy, they will buy with you. So you have 40 or 50 or, uh, or buyers, you know, uh, uh, that, that just continue working with you. You don't have to, you know, push any, any harder, as I said. Um, and uh, so you can see that right, o- right away when a franchisee becomes licensed, his profit and revenue literally doubles overnight because there is a whole new, you know, range of, uh, um, uh, streams of income that uh, that he gets from his franchise. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely can see how, uh, you know, there there is uh, some agents out there that get into the business and they, they really find that maybe the the actual, like you said, the prospecting uh, isn't necessarily for them, but they are more interested in the business growth and the business side of things and kind of yeah. making sure all the different moving parts are coordinated. Uh, I can see how that uh, definitely appeals to a, a pretty good portion of the uh, the real estate population. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And uh, in addition to that, um, you know, in in most states, I'm not going to say everywhere, but in a lot of, you know, uh, states, it's a very overcrowded industry where there are just too many agents. So they are, you know, very, very tough competition because they all have uh, very similar, if not the same value proposition. So uh, you, you can see how an agent would want to differentiate themselves, stand out from the crowd by offering something that is vastly different than everyone else. Um, as I said, owning an, ex- uh, an exclusive territory, so getting all those you know, leads and clients just organically. Uh, but on top of that, getting to, getting, getting to own uh, their own business uh, and not just have to basically run from one commission to another, but actually build a business that gains in value. They can, they can hire a team, they can you know, automate some of the processes, and eventually they can actually sell that business uh, for you know, 10, 20 times more than they, they got it for initially. Um, that's, that's an opportunity that is not really given to, to, uh, to traditional agents. They cannot sell their license, <laughs> basically. So um, that's, uh, those are amongst the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the points that we usually we, we have good discussions about with, uh, with agents that I talk to. Right. So for, um, you know, when it comes to the actual of, you know, gathering leads and getting business, how do you, you know, what are the avenues that you are bringing in leads to these, these franchises and uh, making sure that people are aware uh, that you are in their market? Yeah, absolutely. So that's actually a good question because um, one part for the franchisee, uh, one part is pretty traditional. It would be the same way that an agent, you know, would, uh, uh, you know, an agent or any business owner, you know, would try to, to get leads. So you can, you know, uh, uh, social media advertising, all kind of online advertising, offline advertising, networking, uh, sponsoring the local football team, whatever it might be. The difference being they don't actually have to promote themselves as John Smith. They actually promote themselves. They promote, you know, the, the brand property guys. And every neighboring franchisee also do that. And I do that statewide. The company does that nationwide. So all those layers um, of, uh, of marketing focused in, into just growing that brand um, does, you know, generate a lot more um, uh, leads and traction than each individual uh, agent, you know, trying to promote themselves, you know, having the best headshots and the best, you know, ads on, you know, LinkedIn and so on. Um, so that's, that's one part that is, that is quite different. But in addition to that, you know, when you're in a franchise model, for those who are not f- familiar with that, you're not only, you know, buying in, a known brand and a set of systems and processes that you don't have to figure out for, for yourself. You, you, you come and you just, you know, uh, uh, apply the, the systems, but on top of that, you're actually buying it, uh, uh, buying in a whole set of, um, 
uh, support, you know. So, for instance, we at Property Guys, uh, we provide, you know, a lot of uh, the, the marketing, you know, graphic design, web design, SEO. So all those things where a traditional business owner would have to hire and find contractors for that and spend a lot of money in that. This is provided to you as a franchisee. But on top of that, one thing that is particular to Property Guys, we actually have a call center in-house. Uh, for everything that is outbound and inbound uh, calls. So not only lead generation, you know, calling out to, to get some leads. If you have a list of leads, they can also make those calls and turn them into clients, um, but also inbound calls. So uh, uh, potential buyers or potential sellers that reach out um, uh, on, uh, on the territory, that might be a large number. The franchisee could not handle all those calls themselves. So we have the, the those um uh, professional salespeople at home office that take on those calls and uh, qualify those buyers, send them to the local mortgage uh, professional loan officer uh, if they need a mortgage, schedule the showings and so on and so forth. So as you can see, a lot of, you know, the legwork, a lot of the hard work that um, business owners or agents, you know, have is removed from your plate in order for you as a franchisee to focus on uh, your business development and growing the brand and so on. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, you just listed a couple of things there, just the, you know, the, the marketing, the graphics design work and those types of things, but then also, uh, you know, the qualifying of leads as a small, you know, as an agent that, you know, if I want to start my own and launch my own uh, brokerage or team, and if I don't have that support system, it becomes 90% of the work that I'm doing is all of that stuff rather than exactly. going out there and getting in front of potential, uh, you know, and, and making those sales. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And, and that's why it's quite interesting and almost a little bit uh, paradoxical, the fact that, um, you know, becoming... So uh, another, you know, thing that I have a lot of conversation with with, uh, with agents and with franchisee is that um, uh, real estate agents, uh, you know, want to get into the industry for the flexibility and the income. Um, mm -hmm. And very often it's either one of the or, or the other or none in the sense of if you want to actually make those high income that you know uh we hear uh agents making you you don't have much flexibility you're working you know 24 hours uh 24 7 and um and and vice versa if you want that flexibility usually you you struggle uh or you're not where you'd like to be financially and i'm sure as i'm saying this a lot of agents you know would recognize themselves and sometimes it's 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 neither <laughs> they you know they, they might be working really hard and not even being where, where they'd like to be so that's the the the, the paradoxical thing with becoming a franchisee you're actually getting the best of both worlds. You're you have a lot more flexibility because it's basically a, a huge team effort with uh, the the team at home office and the local real estate professionals. You know the the lawyer, for instance, you know is a lot more hands on than just you know uh, uh, closing the deal um, and, and so on. So all the, the those uh, professionals you know uh, pitch in quite a bit. Um, so you do have you know more time and uh, and also more uh so more time sorry as a business owner you know you basically make you make your own hours but you, you do have a lot more flexibility because you don't have nearly as much to do than what agents have to do um and in terms of income well typically franchisee you know start between 100 to 200k uh, of uh, of income and i've seen franchisee going way above you know three or four hundred so this is the type of income that um uh, realtors usually aim for uh when mm -hmm. they come in the industry well, they actually find it by, by becoming franchisee and following the process that have been perfected for over 25 years. So it's not something new. They literally, we've, we've, uh, we've seen many, many, many franchisees being successful. So if someone comes in, follows the steps and uh, it, there is no way, you know, they, they're not successful, <laughs> basically. <laughs> right. I do want to ask you, um, so, you know, you mentioned that, you know, the the photography and, you know, the, some of those local services that, you know, mm -hmm. a, a seller is going to need to market their home, get it ready for sale, even uh, the, you know, the mortgage or the uh, the lawyers. How does that all work? How do how does that team get built? Yeah, so um it's in part built by the franchisee mm -hmm. and in part built by by me and, um, and and the company. So in the sense of um, so one side part of my job is to actually kind of pre-select and, and vet out some of those professionals. I do a lot of networking. So I do come across lots of, you know, photographers and, and, and lawyers and so on. And the one that are, you know, the more, uh, more interesting one, you know, I build a relationship with them. Um, the, the larger partnerships need to be vetted by home office. So I'm talking 
real estate brokerage when when uh, when needed, um, mortgage bro- mortgage and a lawyer, you know, a re- uh, attorney, real estate attorney firm. Um, so this is you know vetted by by home office, and um, so for any franchisee coming on, we have all the professionals that that you need. Um, but uh, they actually can come on with their own people, especially when we're talking about uh, realtors and mortgage brokers, they already usually have, you know, a whole, a whole network with people they've been working with for years. They are absolutely welcome to bring them on board. Um, they might you know, need to be vetted to make sure, obviously we have quality people um, uh, everywhere, but um, uh, it's basically uh, uh, either or, one or the other. <laughs> right. And then yeah. for the franchisee, once they have, um, you know, kind of established themselves, gotten kind of ingrained with the, the process, uh, are they able to bring on other uh, agents or kind of people within their um, franchise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So when it's a non-licensed franchisee, uh, they they, have, they can build their team. Yeah, absolutely. From day one, but usually typically it's at, at your two or three that they start, you know, delegating. Uh, often that's also when they acquire in a second and a third territory. Most franchisees have more than one uh, unit um, and, you know, they want larger piece of, uh, of the map. <laughs> um, so, um, so they can get uh, yes, yeah, some uh, some some sales people that you know gather leads or door to door and flyers and so on and so forth. You know, put the 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 signs. Where is it? Here, the sign on on the front lawn. We have a very unique sign, uh, the the lollipop. Um, so, uh, which is part of the brand recognition, by the way. Um, and, uh, and they can have you know virtual assistant. They can you know they they can build their team as you know any business owner would do wherever uh, the 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 owner would want whatever they would want to to delegate. Um, but the the cool thing is if the uh, the franchisee is licensed and you know within within our brokerage or even within their own brokerage, actually we don't force them to come on our brokerage if you're you know uh, you have your own brokerage you can you know stay stay within it and and be a proper as franchisee and have you know your your deals going through your brokerage anyhow um in which case yeah they are actually more than welcome to 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 hire some agents it doesn't have to be uh, obviously that would be agents that would be okay not to be uh in the traditional commission they might be on salary might be a smaller commission but for a much larger volume uh, each franchisee does it differently but there are there are options and that's one way to uh, to grow we have some franchisee who have over 52 uh, over 50 percent of market shares uh, in uh, in some in some territories so we're talking you know more than half of, of uh, listings have have this sign <laughs> on so um, um, so yeah the, the one way of, of growing is to uh, to obviously increase the market shares in, in your territory to acquire another territory. Um, and, and yeah, there are ways like that for, for, for the franchisee to, uh, to expand. Right. How have you seen, um, you know, in, in just maybe there's a success story or, or somebody in particular that joined uh, and you've kind of seen them go from being that, uh, that agent that worked at a traditional brokerage to now has their own uh, franchise. What, is, what are some of those uh, folk stories like? Um, so I don't have one specifically that specific scenario that you mentioned, I don't have one coming to mind, um, but I do know uh, one uh, one couple. Uh, their name is uh, uh, Tony and Mark, uh, who acquired a franchise about a year ago. And actually, I got to talk to them uh, very early on. You know, they were very excited and so on. And I've seen their uh, their growth over the past year. Um, and uh, and they actually broke some records uh, in their first year. So they they reached. Uh, 50 listings in uh, in less than six months, and I think they already had 100 listings in their first year. Um, and uh, and so I had a call with uh, with Tony not long ago, maybe one or two months ago, um, to uh, to see you know what what made you know that that success. And she literally told me uh, that they've decided they're they're in their 50s, so they're kind of like pre-retirees. That was you know um, their um, uh, the pre-retirement, you know, uh, business and, um, and they weren't in the real estate industry prior, prior to that, by the way. Um, so she told me that what they've decided immediately when, when they signed with property guys is that they're going to follow to a T all the process, all the training. We have a very thorough training and then ongoing training. Um, and, um, and really it wasn't, you know, um, uh, rocket science. Like you just, you know, followed the process and that, you know, brought, brought that success. Um, then I have another one uh, that comes to mind. His name is Jim. He's in, uh, in British Columbia, so out west, uh, where you know the, it's it's also a pretty crazy uh, real estate market over there. If you're familiar, um, and so what happened? He got his first franchise in 20, 
2019 or 2020. So, you know, just, just before COVID. Um, and, um, and, and he actually acquired in the first three years, three territories. Uh, he came, he has a very different approach. He came with, uh, uh, basically a business mindset. Uh, where he is not at all hands on. He came, you know, he saw it as a business. He, he had had businesses before, put a lot of money into marketing, building a team very early on, expanding very quickly. Um, and now he has three very successful territories. He's in the top 10% or t- top 10 of the, you know, company wide. Um, with that approach that is very different than Mark and Tony who are very hands-on, who are close to their clients and so on. So you see the, uh, the, the two sides of uh, the potential. Right. And so for you, you know, expanding into new territories, it must be nice to be able to go back and say, look, we have 25 years worth of case studies and social, you know, and proof that this this works. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's not always easy because I still have, you know, the uh, uh, the objection of, oh, but I want to see some numbers here locally, in, mm-hmm. you know, in Eastern Mass. Um, and um, and in which case, well, I'm OK, wait, wait to year. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Uh, but it, it's true. That's that's one of the cool factor um, is that we have you know so so many uh, so many data from coast to coast in you know in the mountains in the countryside in the uh, in the east coast the west coast Toronto who is a huge you know huge city uh, Vancouver and so on so and each of those markets they're you know very different in the approach you know in Toronto um, uh, Nathan he has actually two territories there and he's the head of the brokerage PGDR, um, and uh, and so his approach is very different because he obviously targets a lot more, you know, condos and the way to market those signs. You don't see those signs, you know, all over Toronto. It's a it, it's a very different approach. But he has found just as much success as um, uh, Christopher, who has been in the top three for forever. He is in uh, in the mountains in Alberta. Uh, in a small town uh, called uh, Kenmore. And over there, he's the property guy. He's, you know, he actually even uh, tried to to um, to run for, you know, a local election because he was, <laughs> you know, famous <laughs> as, you know, the pro- the property guy. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see those different paths because when you go into a franchise, you think that you're going into, you know, a mall and everyone, you know, does the same thing. No, you actually have the, the you have all the system, the processes, the brand, the support and so on. But then each franchisee actually can take it uh, uh, in, in a certain direction with their own, you know, uh, their own experience and skills and so on. Right. So before we wrap up, um, and this is kind of a, a two part question. Uh, first off, you know, what's the, the future looking like, not only for, for your territory and what you're doing, but uh, company expansion as a whole. And then for anybody mm-hmm. that is listening to this, that might not be in your area, uh, that's interested in learning more and potentially becoming a franchisee, what can they do? Absolutely. So um, for so for me personally, my focus is right now, as I said, New, Eng- uh, New England. So starting with Massachusetts, I do want to. Um, I'm probably going to go next to uh, New Hampshire, um, but you know we- we'll see. Along, uh, I-, I will follow. You know the demand um, as as we're you know we're growing. I have people reaching out from other states, you know neighboring state, Rhode Island, and and so on, asking when you know when I'll, I'll open those states. So. My focus for probably the next five to ten years will be New England, mm-hmm. um, uh, and I, um, uh, I I have I have a colleague who is in charge of you know the expansion across across uh, the U.S. Um, so I know that there are some talks for um, uh, Illinois, California, uh, Seattle. Um, actually, funny enough, Seattle was someone who who heard me on a podcast uh, <laughs> in uh, uh, that was the the Chris Voss show. I don't know if yes. you're familiar. Yes. Yeah, and uh, and he he reached out to me on LinkedIn. and was like, yeah, I'd like to <laughs> become a franchisee. And so that actually links to your uh, your other uh, other question: what someone who is not in Massachusetts can do. Um, so for for them to become franchisee, we actually need uh, a franchise developer, you know, a state franchise developer, an area developer. It's called. So uh, the opportunity there would be to uh, to do what I do, <laughs> to to open the state, and in which case you actually can have both hats. You can be in charge of the franchise development for that state or part of that state. And you actually can own one or two of those, those, those franchises within your territory, um, which is something that I might be doing. Um, thing is, as I mentioned initially, I'm in Malaysia, so I can't right, right now, <laughs> but <laughs> it didn't fit with my, my personal, you know, my personal life, but that, that's definitely a great way 
to to uh, to grow as a franchise developer. It's by having your own franchise, bringing your own you know results locally, having again those signs everywhere, and and you have you have a lot of people then who who want to become franchisee and then want to use use the model. Um, uh, it actually re- reminds me of something when I was. You know, when I was starting and I was, you know, looking who is my target audience, who who this model talks to. So as I mentioned, we have realtors, mortgage brokers, real estate professionals, and aspiring entrepreneurs. But funny enough, um, a lot of uh, franchisee and past franchisee came from being clients, from using property guys uh, for their own homes to to sell their homes and just loving, you know, the experience and then looking into becoming a franchisee. We currently have, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 franchisees who just were initially just clients. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it, it does speak highly, you know, uh, it does say a lot about, you know, the model and, and the brand. Right. So if there is somebody that is, uh, you know, is listening to this and wants to either reach out to you or, uh, you know, to maybe the home office to see if there's a way to get into a state that they, that, you know, you aren't already, what can they do? So they actually can reach out to me directly and then I'll direct them uh, in in, uh, in either cases. Um, so the best way to reach out to me actually is, uh, is LinkedIn. Uh, so my name is very unique, Karen Koreshny on LinkedIn. I'm the only one, so it's easy to find me. <laughs> um, but also if they want to know more, uh, just by typing property guys, Massachusetts or property guys franchise, uh, they will find my website for Massachusetts as well as uh, property guys franchise dot com, which is uh, the, the the home office you know website for for the franchise, and there is a lot of materials, videos, you know, and and so on for them to review even before connecting. Um, and then obviously property guys dot com uh, to to see you know the the listings and how you know how it looks. So um, don't hesitate to uh, to reach out. I'm always open to have you know conversation. I mean, I, I really don't see uh, myself as a salesperson because there is no point. Um, in selling a franchise to someone who's not a good fit. I'm really just there to, you know, share all the knowledge that I have about property guys <laughs> and franchising and so on. Um, and, uh, and then if we're mutually good fit, fantastic. Right. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the, uh, the time to uh, talk with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to be here and, uh, um, and for this opportunity. I really want to thank Krim for joining us today and can see how this model would be really appealing to agents looking to own their own businesses while still having the support of the 25 years worth of experience behind them. Remember, if you're interested in learning more about Property Guys or connecting with Krim, I've included several links in the episode description. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.